during a segment for their podcast Nazi Party. Wallace Britton and Teddy Kraft, Justin Long and Haley Joel Osmond are laughing uncontrollably while discussing a video that has caught their attention. It shows a youngster using a car tanner, earning him the moniker The Kill Bill Kid. The young person accidentally amputates his own leg, which has received a lot of online attention. Wallace will soon be visiting Canada to meet the young man and conduct an interview with him. Wallace arrives in Canada and runs into one of the airport staff members. Wallace already uses a Canadon tea when he tells the man that he doesn't know anything about hockey. Wallace arrives at the Kill Bill Kid's residence to discover that his family is in mourning following his suicide. To deliver the bad news, he dials Teddy in a bar. He finds a note from a man offering to rent out a room in the bathroom along with the promise of hearing tales of adventure. Wallace travels to Bifrost and stops at Howard Howe's estate, Pippi Hill. Michael Parks. Howard appears to be unable to move his legs as he moves around in a chair. When Ernest Hemingway told him to always do what you do intoxicated, the man who was serving Wallace tea started telling a story about how they had fought together. That will teach you to restrain your speech. Even a bottle of alcohol that he shared with Hemingway is displayed to Wallace. He shows Wallace a walrus bone that was used for sex and was found on a mantle. Howard recalls being rescued by a walrus he named Mr. Tusk once when he got lost at sea. Wallace begins to feel dizzy as he hears the tale. After realizing he's been drugged, he faints. Mr. Tusk, it'll be fine, Howard assures him. A flashback shows us Wallace's life before his journey. His girlfriend Ali, Genesis Rodriguez, with whom he is having oral sex, stops him because he is being rather rude about his trip. Instead of the new Wallace who enjoys taking advantage of oddballs for his own gain, she prefers the old Wallace who was awkward and struggling in comedy. He acknowledges that he is doing the wrong thing, but it is for the benefit of the show. He persuades her to carry on the oral sex. Wallace is in a wheelchair and confused when he awakens. Howard explains to him that he had to go to the hospital after getting his leg bitten by a spider, which resulted in swelling. Wallace uncovers his left leg and discovers that it has been amputated and stitched up. In order to prevent him from rising from the chair, he also notices that he has been strapped to it. Wallace understands what has occurred. Wallace's situation and his plan to respond to the age-old question, is man really a walrus at heart, are mocked by Howard during dinner. When Wallace calls Howard a crazy fuck, Howard gets up off his hands and knees, approaches Wallace, and slaps him. Howard makes strange noises and mocks Wallace as he screams. Ali is seen giving a tearful monologue as she discusses the possibility that Wallace has been having an extramarital affair. Teddy is giving her comfort. Another flashback shows Wallace confessing to cheating on Ali with his fangirls shortly after the Kill Bill Kid performance. Wallace has not returned Ali's calls, so she has kept trying. Wallace is actually attempting to reach her and leaves her a message in which he sobs his way through an apology for being an asshole and asks for help. Howard knocks him out as he tries to leave a message for Teddy. Ali wakes up the following morning having slept with Teddy and hears Wallace's message on her phone. She grabs Teddy once she realizes he is in serious trouble. More of Wallace's limbs are amputated by Howard until eventually all of Wallace's flesh and tongue are removed, transforming Wallace into a real walrus with tusks and flippers. Now that he is chained up, all he can do is hop and scream. Howard explains to him how he was left an orphan as a young boy after his parents were murdered and how the years of sexual and mental abuse he endured caused him to despise people. He is compelled to swim in the water around Howard. 
Wallace discovers what appears to be the still decomposing body of another man who was transformed into a walrus underwater. After arriving in Canada, Ali and Teddy attempt to call the police, but are disconnected after Ali gives them the podcast site NaziParty.com, because it sounds like Nazi. Get it? When they encounter Detective Frank Garman, Ralph Garman, he informs them that there is no record of a Howard Howe in the region. He does provide Detective Guy Larpoint, a French-Canadian, with Ali and Teddy's phone number. Johnny Depp. He meets Ali and Teddy in a fast food restaurant and claims to know of a man who allegedly kidnapped and dismembered about 23 victims. Guy first met Howard when he pretended to be a disabled man named Bartholomew two years prior. Howard called about a spider, but Guy was looking for a missing hockey player. Later, Guy discovered the hockey player's torso obstructing a sewer pipe, and Howard vanished. The majority of victims, he reveals to Ally and Teddy, had their leg bones in their mouths. Guy remembers learning from the mother of one of the victims that the unidentified killer is breeding a monster. Wallace is subjected to more torture from Howard by having to swim in the pool with him while naked. Then he gives him a single mackerel to eat. Wallace is identified as Mr. Mustache by two store clerks, Harley Quinn Smith and Lilla Rose Depp, when Ali, Teddy, and Guy visit the convenience store. By lightly tracing over the notepad with a pencil to reveal the last letters written on it, they give Guy the notepad on which Wallace wrote the address for Bifrost. After admitting that he had to kill the first Mr. Tusk and eat him to stay alive, Howard dons his own walrus flesh suit to battle Wallace. By making his man walrus experiments fight Mr. Tusk back, he is attempting to restore Mr. Tusk's honor because he believes that man is a horrible species and that the walrus is more noble and dignified. Wallace is forced to fight him just as Ali, Teddy, and Guy arrive at this location, carrying weapons. Wallace's screams are heard, and they follow the sound. When Howard takes off the suit and attempts to kill Wallace with a hammer as a man, Wallace's inner walrus takes control and stabs Howard in the foot with his tusk. Just as Ali and Teddy enter, he takes him to the ground and starts to impale him through the chest with his tusks. Ali sobs as she witnesses Wallace's transformation as Howard passes away. Guy enters the room and points his shotgun at Wallace as Ali begs him not to shoot. Wallace screams once more after which, after a year, to the Manitoba Exotic Animal Sanctuary go Ali and Teddy. Wallace is currently in a small space with a filthy pool. To enable him to exit, Ali throws him a fish. As Ali calls him, Wallace eats the fish and turns to face her. In yet another flashback, Ali remarks on Wallace's inability to cry. He believes only infants cry. Ali confesses her love for Wallace in the present. He starts to cry. Teddy and Ali walk away. Wallace appears to look at the audience for a brief moment before returning to his house. We would like to express our gratitude for your interest in our Tusk 2014 video. We sincerely hope that it provided both insightful and enjoyable content. If you're looking to learn more about the subject or purchase the featured product, please visit the link in the description below. Keep in mind that by using our affiliate link, you're not only supporting our channel, but you're also getting access to exclusive discounts and promotions on the product. Don't hesitate to take advantage of this fantastic opportunity. Click on the link now and discover the product for yourself. If you found this video helpful, please demonstrate your support by liking, commenting, and subscribing to our channel for more intriguing content. We're always here to assist you and provide you with the best possible value. Once again, thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video.